Yo, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Raymond Jeffries. Firstly, I want to say thank you to everyone out there checking out my weekend review video. And if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. That way you guys don't miss any of my videos in the future. So in this video, what I'd like to do is I like to go over what I have on the radar for this upcoming week, but I also like to show you how I go about doing my analysis, give you a short little recap on my past week of trading and help you out with any tips I'm learning along the way in my trading journey to be helpful to any newer trader out there or any trader who's been trading for a while to kind of help you guys on your journey as well. So just a short recap on my past week of trading. It was a pretty awesome week, if I can say so myself, which I guess I can because I just said it, but it was a great week of trading. Um, it was great because you know, I follow my rules. Any week where I follow my rules like I'm supposed to, it was a great week of trading. So it, by those reasons alone, it was a great week. But it was also a great week because there were these the two trades in particular on the Euro Yen and the Pound Dollar, which really helped me psychologically wise when it comes to trading, which I feel like is the most important part of trading, which not many people talk about for some reason, but is the most important part of trading. And I'm gonna go over the, those two examples in this video. If you guys look in the top left-hand corner there should be a link to the my video last week where I kind of went over those trades in regards to what I was looking at and the kind of analysis of getting into those trades and why I got into them if you guys want to you know see the beginnings of the trades um, but in this video I want to go over if you guys read the title it says you know you can go broke taking a profit then that's an old school um, Wall Street idiom I'm sure you guys have heard before I mean raise your hands if you guys heard it because I know I have I'm assuming you guys are raising your hands too because it's, it's been said throughout the ages of Wall Street you can't go broke taking a profit and I believe that isn't a true statement um, it's not necessarily a lie but I believe it's not a complete statement there we go that's a better phrasing of it i think it's a not not a complete statement because i believe the statement should go more like you can't go broke taking a profit at your predefined area in the market where you wanted to get out according to your plan you can imagine why the first one they stuck with the first one the second one was a little bit wordy but <laughs> i guess that's the one i made up myself but the first one just it just sounds a lot smoother it sounds easier it's you know it sounds better for newer traders to hear that and like i said i don't think it's a i don't think it's a true statement and i'm going to go over why in this week's re, in this weekend review video because i think it's important to kind of break that myth because it's you know, like i said it's not a true statement um what i have on the radar for this upcoming week it's been a pretty active week this past week a lot of markets were breaking out a lot of markets are moving um, especially with the Jackson Hole meeting for the US and then Shinzo Abe for the yen who retired he was the Japanese Prime Minister at the end of the week so we saw a lot of dollar movement a lot of yen movement so there's a mixed bag of things of what I have on the radar a lot some of the markets are breaking out so I have some retest trades I have some counter trend trades and a few patterns in there as well so if you guys you know whatever you guys like to trade it's gonna be in here if you guys look in the description link below there should be little areas in the market where if you guys want to hop ahead to a particular market look at a particular setup that should be in there and yeah without any further ado let's hop in these charts all right so let's hop in the charts the first pair is the euro yen and this was a big pair for me um let's start off initially with our top down analysis if you guys have first time watched my video i do all my when i do all my checks on my certain pairs i do a top down analysis um, where i start off on a higher time frame and work my way down so looking here at the daily, you can see recently price broke above this level of structure and has since been kind of in this channel since we retested the highs yesterday. Um, if we go down the four hour, you'll get a clear view of what I'm talking about. You can see that we were clearly in a bullish trend, new structure high, outside return, new structure high, outside return, new structure high, this outside return, and then we retested the highs with this retest right here. So when we go down to the hour, you'll see that, okay, firstly, let me start off here on the four hours so I can kind of show you guys. So this was, if, if you, like I said, if you look at my video, if you saw my video last week, this was a trade, this was a bullish bat pattern that I was in, and I have been in the past week. It looks something like this, where you go from your X to A, your extension, hit a 50% retracement here, on the B leg, hit a 382 on the C leg, and our completion was down here at the 886. So if you take this trade, the conventional targets for a bat pattern is the 382 and the 618 retracements from A to D. So let me go down to the 60 minute chart because it's kind of easier to see. So if you go down to 60 minutes, so this would have been the initial target areas in the market was right here at the 125 32s and then up here at the 125 87s 
So, but me, the reason I was taking this trade as a trend continuation trade, so my I was looking for a retest of the highs up here at 126.68s. Um, so that was my target for this particular uh, for this particular pattern. You know, it really depends on the type of trader you are. I tested this to where I was looking for these extended targets and a retest of the highs because we, I know we're in a bullish trend. So that allowed me to be a little bit more bullish in regards to where I'm looking for targets. It's not for every trader. Um, you know, if, if you're not as aggressive as me, you may have wanted to take a piece off here at the 382 and then maybe a retest of the highs. Or if you're really conservative, or not honestly really conservative, but more conservative you could have looked for conventional targets so this was a big trade for me because not just imagine imagine the, the pip ver, pip wise about 124.56 is up until about 126.68 so roughly about 400 pips on two contracts um or sorry two, two two positions i guess um but also because as you can see it was not pain free um you can see here okay like i was saying Price came up 382 and immediately retraced. I know a lot of traders who, if this happened to them, they would have been, oh man, okay, well maybe price is coming back, it's gonna stop me out, I'm gonna miss out on this profit, I should maybe exit right here. So this is one area in the market right here where I could have looked to exit if I was, you know, if I was scared about missing out on the profits. Or even up here, where when price did make this new structure high, I move my stops up because I trail my stops. Um, so my stops look something like this. Moved it up to here, you know, tw about eight and ATR below the lows, about 20 pips ish, somewhere in that range. Price made a new structure high up here, but you can see that we consolidated right here at the 618. And if, they, like I said, this was me a few years ago, I mean, a year and a half ago, I would have been getting a really worried right here, especially, okay, well, prices consolidating right here price might reverse and come stop me out maybe i should take my profits while i'm in the green right now and then as you can see we failed to make a new structure high on this candle right here so i wasn't able to adjust my stops up and, you know like i said if i was a newer trader i would have been really worried so maybe i would have taken my profits right here maybe a year and a half ago when i saw price wasn't able to make a new structure high i may have gotten out right there so that's another area right there in the market where I could have exited. And uh, sorry, I want to I want to map these out because I think it's important to map out these areas in the market where we would have gotten scared. Um, another area would have been right here when price came back up was retesting. And I'll you know I could have been thinking to myself before, man, this is my my third chance to get out of this while I'm still at the six one eight. Price always reverses. This is conventional targets. Maybe I should get out here before price comes down and stop me out. And as you can see, we had kind of a bat pattern setting up right here as well so you know you could have been telling yourself oh man there's a bat pattern right here maybe i should get out before price comes down completes a bat pattern and stops me out i might as well take the profits while i can that's another area in the market especially price was com completed a double top right here on the 60 minute as you can see price came down retested you know that could have caused fear in a, in a lot of traders with bearish divergence but because the way i tested my plan i have faith in my plan I didn't, you know, I, I, yes, we all have that emotion to maybe, maybe, maybe I'll think about it, you know, maybe I should get out there. But if you have faith in your plan, you should understand that this is an area where you want to get out because it doesn't follow your rules. And if you deviate from your rules this time, what's going to stop you from sticking to your rules next time? Uh, and so I didn't do that. And as you can see, price basically ran up, hit my targets, and then immediately reversed down. Um, but after we didn't make new structure highs, I did move up my stops below because i like i said i trail my stops up but as you can see i ended up getting up right here at my predefined area where i wanted to take where i wanted to take my profits would these people have been lying if they you know would you have blamed them if they thought to themselves man i can't go broke taking a profit right here so maybe i should get out at these areas in the market maybe i should get out here you know you can't go broke taking a profit it, that that's something they may have been going through their mind but what if I told you if they did take their profit, they would have missed out on about 100 pips right there of, of potential tar profit on this on this uh, trade? Or even right here, they would have missed out on, uh, what was it, like 100, 100, 200, almost 200 pips right there on this trade. You see, like, it's it's important to make sure you guys stick to your rules when it comes to trading. And uh, like I said, that, that's something that's important to me and that's just kind of just been instilled in my brain and even furthermore in my in my trading journey. And I hope this is helpful to anyone out there showing you that, you know, yes, 
you may not have gotten broke this time, but I know this particular setup, you know, is a, hits about maybe 40% of the time. So I know that I'm going to lose or I'm going to get stopped out 6% and I'm going to hit my targets the other four. And I want to make sure I'm involved in every one of those times where I hit it those four times out of 10. Because if I, if I miss one of those, guess what? I'm now I'm not getting my expectancy on this setup that I'm supposed to be getting and I'm self-sabotaging myself. And that's just something I wanted to go over on this trade because I think it's really important to just kind of show you guys like because I know I like I said if this was me a while ago I would have been out of this trade real quick because I would have been like oh man Mark is reversing I got to exit but like I said just a lesson learned um, so looking at this pair now what am I looking at looking at here we got a couple different areas of structure we have an area of structure right here like I said that market tested we have a structure right here to the downside so now that we've hit the highs. I'm not looking to get involved in any trend continuation setup until we break structure highs up here. And until then, I'm only looking at counter trend trades and some type of structure trades until that point. So if we're looking at this as an area where I'm looking to take only counter trade and, um, and you know, pattern trades in this consolidation, we have a few things setting up. It depends if you this is an X to A for you. If it is an X to A for you, if you're not accounting for this, then we have a cipher pattern setting up goes X to A, make sure we at least hit a 382, and make sure we hit a 127 extension, which we do right there, and we don't go beyond the 1414, and then we go a 786 retracement from X to C. And that looks something like this. We have an X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion down here. Um, so this is something that's on the radar. I don't. I personally don't trade ciphers on the euro yen, so this is not something I would be looking to get into. But it's just something on the radar if you are a cipher trader. Um, but we also have a a structure based trade right here setting up. This is an area structure right here where price tested, and you can see that we're currently retracing up. We did get a higher high, higher close. Um, but if you're a little more conservative, you would like to see some type of double bottom setup right here. Give you a clear to find area to play stops below here. I would only say if you're looking to get take targets on a particular setup like this, I wouldn't necessarily be looking for a shot across. I guess it depends on your aggressiveness as a trader. But for me, I'm looking at this area structure right here looking left. So this would this is still a pretty decent risk reward. Um, and this just feels this just looks to me as a safer area. Um, because as a, a lot of times you'll notice when market retraces all the way down to this previous level, this previous outside return of this little mini trend right here, you'll see that market comes up to that left shoulder, it loses strength, and then it rolls over, and then it ends up, you know reversing at that point and completing. So, you know, it, it just depends on how aggressive you are. Um, and if we do happen to break this level of structure, what you could do is you can look to get involved in some type of trend continuation trade to this level of structure lower. I'd be mindful of this little level right here because this is a level of structure for me. So, you know, if I would preferably, if we do, I would like to break below here. And then uh, that gives me a little bit more space to look for a retracement to play it for a way down. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I have on this pair. All right, so starting off here on the pound dollar. Uh, so on the pound dollar, you can see recently we broke this level of structure right here looking left. We were consolidating. We had a nice breakout candle right here, um, but we are breaking out into this level of structure right here. It's kind of hard to tell um, the levels of structure within here. So what I like to do is I like to kind of get the highs of the wick and then the lows of the wick. And then once I go down to the 240, <clears throat> excuse me you can kind of go back and just kind of scroll back and look for those for that area in the market and when we scroll back scroll back to that area you can kind of get a clear view of where the, the structure levels are within that within those wicks so you can see it's right there and there's a little level of structure right here so that you know that so you can kind of map it out that way so it's easier to see it's because it's really hard to see on the daily and it kind of clarifies some things so here on the four hour you can see that we are clearly in a bullish trend. We came up to this point, price kind of basically channeled sideways right here, which was a really good area. For, well, personally for, for myself, uh, where I was taking some trades, uh, looks something like this. Looks something like this. All right. So when we go down to the hourly, we'll get a clearer view of what I'm talking about. So this was an area structure right here. So price came up. 
we basically had these nice little train tracks. I was actually involved in a trade down here. Um, we did have overlapping levels of structure, which you'll find yourself that's going to happen sometimes when you trade. Um, I was involved in a higher, high, higher close structure trade right here. Um, if you guys look at my midweek video, I kind of went over this. Um, basically, my targets were up here at a retest of the highs at about 132.40s in this area. Um, I got out on that mega wick candle that happened during the Jackson Hole meeting, which was awesome. And then more recently, you can see we broke this level of structure to the upside. So I'm asking myself, okay, we broke this level of structure. I am looking at the chart and I'm saying, okay, well, now that we, I'm expecting price to go higher. If I'm expecting price to go higher, I ask myself, where am I expecting price to go? And I know my next real level of structure is up here around 134.24. So I'm, you know, with that being in mind, I'm going to look to get bullish and look for possible trend continuation setups. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for some type of retracement up into this area right here. So I'm looking for some type of move back into this higher level of structure and then looking to buy for, you know, looking for some type of double bottom in this area for a retest of the highs with a possible looking for extensions further out. Um, it really depends on you know how you are as a trader. I'm personally not looking for extensions past this point. I'm just looking for retests of the highs because it's the type of trading style I have. Um, some other traders, they might be getting involved in looking for that extension. It, like I said, it really just depends. Um, but what another thing that could happen, you know, the market doesn't have to retrace. <laughs> the market can literally just go straight up, and I. And we've seen this this past week on, on the, like a euro yen where you, you make a prediction, the market breaks out and literally just goes straight to that point. If the market does come straight here, you know, when it doesn't give us a chance to get involved, it's okay. That's how the market moves sometimes. Sometimes you make a right prediction and you just don't have a, you don't have a valid setup. What I would look for if we did happen to come straight here and we didn't get some type of retracement, I would look for some type of double top. I wouldn't be aggressive looking for a lower, lower, lower close in this area um, because I don't have a, a clear predefined structure of looking straight left. Um, so I would look for, I would be a little bit more cautious. I look for some type of double top to get involved in. If you are a little bit more conservative than that, you can look for some type of 2618 setup to get involved for a retest of this level of structure. Um, like I said, if we do get in, if market does come straight up, I'm look for some type of t double top up here to get involved in that move of that retest down here lower. Uh, that's what I have on this pair. All right, so the next pair we have on the radar is the pound yen. So looking here at the pound yen, starting off on the daily, you can see that we broke this level of structure right here looking left yesterday, but since that point, we've had a, a nice doji candle, which signifies some indecision in the market. Um, if, but because we broke that level higher, where am I expecting price to go? The first level of structure I would look is right here, uh, which we already hit today. But the main level I would be looking to get tested is up here around 145s. So it's a quite a big zone in here. Um, come, when we go down to the four hour, you can get a look at what I'm looking at right here. Um, well, that's weird. Why does that look like that? Huh. Okay, well, regardless, you can see clearly we've been in an uptrend. Recently, like I said, we broke this level of structure right here looking left. We've moved higher and has since been coming down in some type of retracement. Get a good view here for some reason. My four hour looked a little weird. Um, on the on the hourly, what I like to do, I like to map out my levels of structure. So I can get a clear view on representation of where those levels of structure are at because I'm a structure trader. If I'm a structure trader, I want to map these levels out. So I know we have a level of support down there. We have a level of resistance up here. And you can see that more recently, we broke this level of structure right here. What that looks like right there. So you can see that we were clearly in a bullish trend. Um, sorry, I don't mean to scrunch back and forth, but I wanna make sure you guys see this. New structure high, outside return. I don't know if the, well, let me see if that was a new structure high. No, okay, so I guess this would be the new structure high. Outside return, new structure high, outside return. And we see we had some type of complex pullback all the way in consolidation till we came to this point. And we broke above this level, making a new structure high. So now this becomes my outside return. So what that tells me is until this level of structure down here is broken, we are in a bullish trend. And as long as this level of structure continues to be broken, we are in a bullish trend. 
So when I come down to getting involved, this is my kill zone right here. This whole area, because from my, my previous new structure high to my previous or my outside return, this is my kill zone, okay? So I'm looking for a price to reverse anywhere in this level. Because it's the pound yen, it's such a big pair um, and there's such a big range um, in regards to pips on here. I'm very, always a little more cautious when it comes to this pair in regards to the type of trades I'm getting me into just to make sure I'm on the right side of the market in regards to the risk I'm taking to take on trades. Uh, they don't call this pair the beast for no reason. Uh, so the trade that I'm actually currently in on this trade, and, that, and this is the trade I actually love. Um, for uh, This is a setup I actually particularly love for this uh, pair in particular because it's such a high ATR uh, pair, is I'm looking for price to come back into the higher area of the zone um, that's mapped out right here, which was my previous, out, my previous new structure high. And then I'm looking for, on a lower time frame, I'm looking for price to hit a double bottom in this area, and then I'm looking for a retest of the highs. So what that looks like is this. Oh wait, let me go down to the 15. What it looks like is this. So this is what it looked like at the time. After Shinzo Abe basically announced that he was gonna retire, price came immediately down. Um, we hit a nice double bottom right here. This was my signal candle. I got involved in the trade at this point. Um, I placed my stops in ATR below the lowest low. So the lowest low right here is 140.12s, and I believe the ATR was about 20 pips at the time. ATR at the time was about 18 pips. I like to be a little bit more safe, so in, 80, so in 92s, right there. So that's where my stops are at, um, and I like the fact that it's below a nice even handle level, level of the 140s. So, and then you just follow price and you kind of see the risk reward on this, especially if I'm looking for a retest of the highs. I'm not looking for the complete highs because I want to make sure I get before that 50s handle. And what's, and this is something you got to ask yourself, I want to make sure I get on on this trade. What's a few pips, you know, it's not that big of a deal and I back test it this way. I, because a lot of times you'll notice price comes up to that 50 handle and then just reverses without actually retesting the highs. So this is my level of, I'm looking to get out of. So my risk reward on this trade and you'll see why I love this trade. It's not a high probability trade by any means, but because of the risk reward, it doesn't have to be a high probability trade. So that's my reward. This is what my risk looks like. And now you tell me, is this a trade you wanna take? I mean, yes. I mean, the sh short answer is yes. I mean, I guess it depends on your personality and the type of trader you are, but that's one, two, three, four, a little bit more than a four to one risk reward on this trade. So, you know, this is a trade I look to get into every time. We had a nice double bottom at this uh, previous outside, or sorry, this previous new structure high. Um, bullish divergence, price, you know, nice long testing wicks. We basically tested that 140s level. And, you know, price was, you can see, price was basically moving sideways. The, uh, the RSI was trending a little higher and we never got stopped out. Since that point, we're, like I said, this is a trade I'm currently in. I'm not expecting it to go straight up there, you know, but this is one of those pairs, like I said, it's one of those trades that I'm confident in, but I have to be okay with losing. And if I do lose this trade, say price comes down, stops me out, that's perfectly fine. Because I'm, I'm still looking for a bullish setup. So when I go look at the hourly, I'm still looking for a retest of the highs. So now I'm, I know this is my whole area. This is my whole area I'm looking at right here as my area where I'm looking to get involved in, but I can kind of break that down to a little bite size into this little area right here. I can like to get involved in this little initial area as my kill zone. If I do that, if I do get involved here, I have to be mindful to myself that I will have to get into this again if price does come lower, stops me out, and I do get a valid entry down here. So say price comes say price comes down stops me out and then i get a new i get a uh, three bar reversal a double bottom or something in this area a higher high higher close i'm getting involved again looking for a retest of the highs you got and that's the thing if you're going to be a trend trader you have to be okay with taking multiple stabs at the market um, and that's something I didn't know initially when I first thought I wanted to be a trend trader. Uh, I thought, oh, you know, I just get involved here and that's it. Market keeps going up. Your trend is your friend. But you have to be okay with being wrong multiple times and still getting back involved and pulling the trigger. Uh, so that's how I'm looking at this one. Like I said, I'm, I'm hoping for, I'm 
you know, um, selfishly, I'm hoping we just go straight here and I get and I hit targets. But if we don't, then hey, this is an area I'm looking to get involved again. Uh, so that's what I have on the pound yen. The next pair I have is the dollar yen. All right, so the next pair I have is the dollar yen. Um, as you can see here, starting off on the daily, price has recently tested this higher level of structure and has since completely reversed. Like I said, it's been a kind of a crazy day with the whole Shinzo Abe news. And then you can see that we're currently testing this lower level of structure right here. So when we go down to the four hour, you get a clear view of what I'm talking about. Um, I am missing some data for some reason on this. Uh, I don't know why that is. Um, get my <laughs> check my broker for that. But I am missing some data, but it doesn't, it, it's still the same. Just imagine there being a big, you know, red candle right here. So you can see recently, you know, price has been somewhat in a downward trend. We have tested this lower level of structure over, going to test this lower level of structure. This is our lower level. This is our higher level. I believe if we go to the hourly, it's not, it's everything's there. Yeah, okay, so this looks a lot better. Um, so I know th these are my two levels of structure. I know this is my level of structure to the downside. I know this is my level of structure to the upside. So depending on where price goes in here, we're in consolidation. This was something I had on my radar this past week. We had a bearish bat pattern that completed. It looks something like this, X to A, A to B. We had a 50% retracement right here, B to C, and a C to D completion up here at the 886. But we also had a Gartley pattern as well. And that actually set up. I don't actually don't know if the Gartley completed or not. This is kind of fly on the radar. I know I had it on my radar this midweek, but I don't know if it actually completed because I took the bat because that was the first one to complete. So this is our X to A. We hit the 618 retracement right here. And then we go and we see that C leg to make sure we hit a 618 retracement, which we clearly do right there. And then our completion is a 127 extension of A to C which we actually did not hit. So I take that back. We did not, it depends on if you front run your orders and how much you front run your orders by, you may have gotten completed on that cipher, or sorry, that Gartley pattern. And that's why I take the pattern that um, completes first because you'll see this happen a lot where price comes to that point and just completely reverses. And this ended up being a two target winner, pretty pain free actually. And it was one of those where I was like, oh, hey, this hit two targets and that was not, I was pain free. That was nice. Um, those are always nice. But now I ask myself, okay, where, where are we at in the market? What am I looking at? Where do I expect price to go next? I know we're at this level of structure right here looking left. So let me draw this out a little differently here. It looks something like this. So I draw my level of structure. What you could be looking at here is you could be looking at some type of structure trade similar to what we saw on the Euro yen. Um, but it really, it, it's different with targets because you see price came down into this area. You saw a nice little test wick right there, nice three bar reversal. So if you were aggressive, that could have been your entry candle. We actually came back and double bottomed right here with bearish divergence. So that could have been an entry candle as well um, on that double bottom confirmation. But the only thing is, you, this is something where I had to learn and I had to determine myself as a trader. You have to determine what you do with this wick. Because depending on how you take your targets, I use structure, I use structure based targets. So this would have been an area right here I would have looked at me to get out. Because it would have been before the an even, an even handle number of 106. But this giant wick right here kind of messes things up. So you have to, you have to first you have to ask yourself, do you account for this? Me, I do account for it. So this is not a setup I'd be looking at. If this, if you don't account for this, and you know you back tested it, and you don't really account for this wick right here, then you can look, you can still look for price to come back and retest this area structure right here. You can look for, you know, some type of you know, double bottom again, or what you can see we double bottom or some type of triple bottom to confirm it, to get involved, to look for some type of trade like this. Um, you can look for maybe a twenty six eighteen. That's what a twenty six eighteen is. You can wait for price to come up, break this level, but it's so close to that level, I, I can't imagine us breaking it by like three pips, coming back and then getting involved and in, without it touching this level. Um, so your only real, I mean, I don't wanna say your only real, if I, if this was me and I didn't account for this, the only real thing I'd be looking for, some type of retest of this area, playing it for a retest of this. Um, but what I'm personally looking at is I'm looking for a break of this level of structure. So I'm, I wanna break of this level of structure 
Because if I go to the four hour, I ask myself, if we break this level of structure right here, where is my next level I'm expecting price to go? You know, I identify this area being broken. I predict now that price is going to come to this next level of structure because price is, I believe, these levels of structure are like a magnet to price. So if we do get a break below here, then I can look to get involved in some type of retracement, some type of pullback trade to play it for a move lower. Um, it really, like I said, it really depends on the type of trader you are, but this is something I'm definitely looking at, and this is something I would definitely prefer more in my trading style. Um, and like I said, it's easier for targets as well, especially with this wick, this wick right here. But if you're playing it for, for a move across, then you know this wick might not mean anything to you. Uh, but like I said, it really depends on how you view the market. But me personally, I'm looking for some type of break below, retest, getting involved in some type of retest here, and then playing it for a move to that lower level of structure. Um, and it could go straight there and I could not get any type of you know involvement or price could kind of do like an ebb and flow where price comes down, you can get involved there, you can get involved there, all the way down to that level and then we'll reassess once we get there. All right, so that is the end of my weekend review video. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. You guys found value out of it. If you guys did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that little bell notification. That way you guys get notified of any of my videos in the future. Um, and if that was helpful to you guys, let me know, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know, you know if you agreed with my analysis or you didn't agree with my analysis. I always like having this conversation with other traders and you know being helpful and just kind of discussing charts. I'm kind of a big nerd that way. You know I, What can I say? Um, I just nerd out on these things um so until my midweek review video i will see you guys then have a great rest of your weekends and uh yeah take care bye